بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نائن سیون ڈبل زیرو نومبر ٹوینٹی تھری پیپر ٹو ٹو کوشچن فور فائیو اینڈ سکس ایکسپلین ان دس ویڈیو کوشچن نمبر فور دی ایلویولا آف دا لنگز آف دا بین گیس ایکسچینج سرفیس ان ہیومنس ایکسپلین ہاؤ بلڈ فلو تھرو دی ایلویولر کیپلریز ہیلپس ٹو مینٹین اسٹیپ ڈیفیوژن گریڈینٹ فار گیس ایکسچینج بلڈ ارائیونگ از ڈی آکسیجنیٹڈ اینڈ دا نیولی آکسیجنیٹڈ بلڈ از کنٹینیوسلی ریموڈ سو دا ڈیفیوژن گریڈینٹ ول بی مینٹینڈ So, two points, two marks, blood arriving is deoxygenated and oxygenated blood is continuously removed so the diffusion gradient will be maintained. Ventilation of the lungs is a process of inhalation and exhalation. Ventilation helps to maintain steep diffusion gradient. Explain the role of elastic fibers in the alveolar wall during ventilation. Elastic fibers, as you know, and I keep on telling you in many, many mark schemes, is allows the alveolar, also allows the alveoli to stretch on inhalation. And it prevents the alveoli from overstretching or bursting. But when then they recoil, they help in forcing the air out. When they recoil during exhalation or breathing out, they force the air out. So stretch and recoil. You see, if they just stretched and didn't recoil, what would happen? The alveoli would expand, but then they don't, won't, won't go back to their original position. So the alveoli stretch on inhalation It also prevents the alveoli from uh, overstretching or bursting when you're taking in air. And when, when they recoil, they help in the forcing the air out uh, of the lungs. So it allows alveoli to stretch on inhalation, recoil to help in exhalation to force the air out and prevent the alveoli bursting on breathing in. Then coming to the C part of the question, some cells in the alveolar wall are specialized to secrete surfactant to prevent collapse of the alveoli at the end of exhalation. In these cells, surfactant is stored in membrane-bound organelles known as lamellar bodies. Surfactant is a mixture of lipids, many phospholipids, and some proteins. A protein known as ATP binding cassette transporter A3, ABCA3, is needed to move surfactant phospholipids into lamellar bodies from the surrounding cytosol the fluid part of the cytoplasm. Suggest and explain the features of protein ABCA3 that make it suited to its function. So what is it? It's a membrane transport protein. It has a binding site for uh, the surfactant phospholipids. ATP is used for active transport or to provide the energy for active transport. The phospholipids move against a concentration gradient from a lower to a higher concentration. And this allows, uh, this is possible because it is able to carry out a conformational change. Conformational change means change in the shape. Conformation. It's a very typical English word. Everybody must know the meaning of it. If you don't know it, please Google it. So transport protein has binding site for surfactant phospholipids, ATP hydrolyzed for active transport, phospholipids move against a concentration gradient, able to carry out a conformational change. Then coming to the D part of the question, the gene ABCA3 codes for protein ABCA3. The gene is 80,000 base pairs long and is composed of introns and exons. Protein ABCA3 is composed of 1704 amino acids. Figure 4.1 shows, shows the flow of genetic information in the production of ABCA3. Complete figure 4.1 to the name of the process occurring at X and Y. So X is transcription. What is transcription is from the DNA to the pre-mRNA. So transcription is one mark. And messenger RNA to polypeptide is translation. Either you know it or you don't know this. This is not something that you have to guess. Then it says a triplet of basis codes for one amino acid. The fact only partly explains how the activity of gene ABCA3, which is 80 KB long, can result in the protein ABCA3, which is only 1704 amino acids long. Suggest other reasons to explain the difference in the number of base pairs in gene ABCA3 compared with the number of amino acids in ABCA3. Very simple. Introns are non-coding regions. Introns are removed after transcription. Exons only are joined to form the mRNA. 
some DNA triplets code for stop codons and the first amino acid which is always met or methionine is the start codon and then there are some non-coding regulatory sequences. So introns, non-coding areas, introns removed after transcription, exons joined to form mRNA, some DNA triplets are start codons, stop codons, and some of course are the first amino acid coded for by is always the start codon. Question number five, tuberculosis is an infectious disease caused by bacterium and the majority of people only the lungs are affected. In most cases, the transmission of TB from an infected person to an uninfected person involves mycobacterium tuberculosis. A different species of bacterium is involved in the transmission of TB from cattle, such as dairy cows, to humans. Name the species of bacterium causing the transmission of TB. Mycobacterium bovis. Mycobacterium bovis. But you could have even written just M bovis and you could have got a mark for that. Cambridge was very kind to you. In some areas, cattle cannot be regularly tested or treated for TB. In these areas, milk and dairy products from infected dairy cattle may enter the human food chain. In these areas, milk and dairy products from infected cattle may enter the human food chain. Outline a controlled measure that can be taken to protect people that consume milk and dairy products from these infected cattle. Pasteurizing the milk or drinking pasteurized milk. You can even say heat treatment of uh, the milk. Just cooking the milk will not get you a mark. Or you can say use pasteurized milk to make the dairy products like yogurt and cheese. Or you say meat from the cattle should be cooked very thoroughly. Cattle are not usually affected by M tuberculosis, but the pathogen can cause disease in other animals. A few cases of transmission of TB from person to animals have been reported. Explain the most likely method of transmission of TB from an infected person to an animal. So the infected person coughs or sneezes and the uninfected animal inhales. Or you can say droplet infection is transmitted or the pathogen is present in the airborne droplets. So any of this would have got you uh, the mark uh, for this, uh, for this, this is uh, two marks. So infected person breathes out, sneezes, and infected animal inhales or breathes in or inspires or breathes in. Or you could have said droplet infection, uh, the bacteria or the pathogen in the airborne droplets will reach the animal. So two marks, but the two marks were really weird sort of a mark scheme, but that's it, that's what Cambridge says. Infected person coughs and animals inhales in pathogen and airborne droplets. D part of the question, in most people, the response of the immune system to the infection of lung tissue by M tuberculosis can prevent the spread of the bacterium to other organs of the body. The bacterium is contained in the lungs in a dormant state. This is known as latent TB. Outline the treatment that is used to kill M tuberculosis in latent TB infections. Antibiotics. A combination of treatment of different antibiotics. You could have named the antibiotics rifampicin, isoniazid, pyrazinamide, ethambutol for four months, up to 12 months. And it's a shorter time using combination than single antibiotics. So antibiotics, combination treatment, either you named the medicine, the name of the medicines, rifampicin, isoniazid, ethambutol, uh, and you keep it up to from four months to 12 months. Then it says, part E of the question, uh, M tuberculosis can spread in the blood and limb to other organs in the body. In very rare cases, a disease known as mycotic aneurysm has to be caused has can be caused due to infection of the arterial wall, particularly in the elastic arteries. The damage caused by the pathogen can lead to a rupture of the artery. With reference to the structure of the wall of the elastic arteries, 
suggest how damage caused by m tuberculosis infection can lead to the rupture of the artery you may uh, draw a diagram if you wish i don't know i wouldn't like to draw a diagram so loss of uh, or damage to the elastic fibers from the tunica media so you see this is the artery and this is the crinkled endothelium and then you have this layer which is the muscle layer which has got smooth muscle and then you've got the elastic tissue here and the collagen and the elastic tissue here in the external layer so loss of damage to the elastic fiber so this part is damaged and this part is damaged there's damage to the elastic fibers and the smooth muscles from the tunica media or the middle layer and then there is damage to the collagen fibers which are present so there are these collagen fibers which are present here and these collagen fibers are also damaged so they cannot withstand the high pressure in the in the arteries arteries are all the arteries arise from the aorta except the pulmonary artery and as the elastic tissue is destroyed as it says in the question structure of the elastic artery suggests how this damage so there can be uh, the elastic tissue now cannot stretch or expand and there'll be over stretching or over expansion and of course there'll be no recoil because you see what do the elastic fibers do they stretch and recoil so no stretching cannot stretch and uh, no recoil so no stretch no recoil there we have a lot of issues so remember how you going to explain this and how you going to if you know the structure of it then you can explain it also very well you see the question it said can lead to the rupture of the artery so rupture of the artery can only take place if there's going to be damage to the collagen which is gives it the strength so loss to elastic fiber and smooth muscle loss to the collagen fibers cannot withstand the high pressure cannot stretch cannot recoil uh, now let's look at question number six water that is absorbed from the soil solution by the roots of a plant enters xylem vessels and is transported to the leaves and buds figure 6.1 shows four important requirements for the efficient transport of water from the roots to the leaves of a plant so requirements for the efficient is number one xylem vessel must be able to cope with the tension created by the movement of water there should be minimum resistance to the flow of water water in xylem vessel must be continuous unbroken columns tension needs to be created in xylem vessels name the specialized cell that are arranged one to end one to uh, arrange end to end to form xylem vessel xylem vessel elements xylem vessel elements right you got a mark for that explain how tension is created in the xylem vessel that's two marks a transpiration pull uh, because of the water evaporating from the spongy mesophyll surfaces this creates a water potential gradient and or you can say a pulling force or low water pressure at the top and high water pressure at the bottom that's an explanation for it and of course the cohesion adhesion of water molecules cohesion is between the water molecules and adhesion is between the water molecules and the cellulose so transpiration pull owing to water evaporating from spongy mesophyll surfaces water potential gradient cohesion and adhesion of water molecules then coming to part uh, c1 of the question uh, figure 6.1 highlights how the structure of xylem vessel must be related to their function this means that during the development of xylem vessel changes need to occur to the cells forming the vessels the walls of the cell forming the xylem vessels become lignified during development explain how this feature is important for the efficient transport of water basically you've got to understand is that the lignin prevents the collapse from the tension which is created or the lignified walls are strong and they're rigid and this gives a lot of support then the adhesion of the water molecules to the hydrophilic groups in the lignin to maintain the column of water it's just like the water molecules sort of uh, stick to it and are pulled upwards then waterproofing properties water prevented from leaving the xylem vessels doesn't move out of the xylem vessels then lignification lignification is associated with cell death and this allows the formation of hollow hollow cells and ultimately a hollow tube because there's minimum resistance to flow and the cell walls are rigid to allow the tension to develop so how this feature is important for the efficient transport of water that means the lignin 
which is deposited in the wall will prevent the collapse it is going to give it support it is going to give it the ability for the adhesion of water to the hydrophilic R groups of the lignin then the waterproofing properties of lignin water will be prevented from leaving the xylem vessels everywhere it just sort of doesn't become a sieve and a water just moves out of it it doesn't reach even the leaves and lignification is associated with cell death which results in the formation of hollow cells and finally the formation of hollow tubes so a lot of points for you to come up with any uh, any two of them so any two of these points prevents collapse strong thickening for support adhesion of water to the hydrophilic groups of the lignin waterproofing properties of lignin or uh, the deposition of lignin causes cell death and forms hollow tubes so any of those two you could have given me and you could have got the two out of two then coming to the part two of the question during the development of xylem vessel the cell end walls of the cells forming the vessel break down this contributes to minimizing resistance to the flow of water and then it says describe one other main change that needs to occur to these cells so that their structure becomes suited to their function loss of the cell contents they become hollow loss of cytoplasm loss of the nucleus and formation of the pits there's only one mark but you would have come up with any one of these loss of cell contents loss of cytoplasm you see because if the cell has to become hollow then everything in it has to die that's all we i usually say is cell contents die so it becomes hollow and there's loss of cytoplasm there's loss of the nucleus and there's formation of the pits which allows lateral movement of water so loss of cell contents loss of cytoplasm loss of nucleus formation of pits which allows um, lateral movement of water thank you very much please everybody try to offer your five prayers daily uh, best of luck and please let me know if there's anything else which you would like me to add or improve in these videos thank you very much